That's okay. Okay. Uh, hi. hi, welcome all. <laughs> hi, welcome all. Uh, welcome to the second MySQL presentation today. My name is Ajo Robert. I work for the MySQL server team in Oracle. So today we will talk about two topics, two different topics. First one is not much explored one feature which was there for a long time. Second is a newly introduced feature in MySQL. Safe harbor statement. That's a few seconds here. So today's agenda, um, we will go to, we will understand what is a distributed transaction, the basics. I'll go through the basics uh, later fast and we'll see the XA standard, which is, in, which is an industry standard for XA and uh, how MySQL is participating in it or we can, how we can use MySQL as part of XA. And the second part of the talk is uh, about uh, the NoSQL story from MySQL, how we can use the NoSQL syntax with MySQL at the same time where we can use the SQL as well on the same data. So before starting some basics, uh, what is a transaction? Transaction is nothing but a few set of statements we need to execute or a few set of actions we need to execute to achieve a task. So what is the importance of uh, being a proper transaction? We need asset properties. That's what we are looking for. So we are all from database, so we know the importance of asset, right? So what about distributed transaction? How is it different from regular transaction? Regular transaction we talk about is when it is executed in single instance or one machine. Distributed transaction is where it is executed across machines, whether it could be geographically distributed machines or it could be heterogeneous machines. It could be functionally different. But what we need, we need asset properties on the transaction which is performed across these nodes. So how can we do it? There, are, uh, there could be different ways to do it. There's one of the ways is the XA transaction, XA uh, protocol which is from open group. So we'll see how is it and uh, what is it. Before going there, uh, let's see how popular is it. It's been adopted by different functional and uh, logical entities like databases, file systems, message queues. Considering uh, database uh, world, it's been supported by most of the famous databases, including MySQL, Oracle, DB2, and uh, other system among other systems. So the basics, um, XS standard uses the two-phase commit protocol, the famous two-phase commit protocol to ensure the uh, asset properties. So for those who don't know the two-phase commit protocol, so what we do is once a transaction body is over, we go for two-phase commit. That means we execute the prepare, transaction prepare on all the participating nodes. So once the prepare is successful on all the nodes, we go for a commit on all the nodes. The property of prepare is that if prepare is successful, the commit can never fail. It is a node's responsibility to make sure the commit is successful if prepare is success. So if the prepare is failed on one node, we will execute rollback on all the nodes. So how to achieve the uh, success of uh, commit after prepare success? That is the responsibility of individual nodes uh, implementation. I mean, it's up to the node. It can implement in whichever way it want, whatever logging mechanism, on double write or whatever mechanism it want to use. So what are the modules in this XA topology? Three parts. One is application, which, uh, which want to perform the XA transaction across nodes. Second one is a transaction manager which performs the two-phase commit on behalf of the application. Third one is a resource manager, which performs actual operation on a resource, whether it's file system, database, or message queue. So MySQL will act as a resource manager, only as a resource manager. 
So, whoever want to use Excel with MySQL should uh, either implement the transaction manager as part of the application or you can use a independent transaction manager which is available in the market. So, how do we go? The general use case is there is no point in having one resource manager when it is XA because XA is all about across node, right? So, we will have multiple resource managers and we need to execute one transaction. And uh, transaction manager is pretty simple, so most of the times you can implement that as part of your application. So, let us consider one use case the application level sharding. In MySQL, you have to use sharding at times due to geographic constraint or scalability constraints or whatever reasons you have to implement it. So, what if you have to execute a transaction across the nodes, uh, as it complaint transaction across the nodes? It is going to be a nightmare, right? I mean, if it is possible. With XA, it is super easy, super simple. So, we will we'll see an example later, but this is one use case where XA is very much relevant. Another one is a heterogeneous transaction. You want to have a transaction which is across a file system, database, uh, database or a message queue. I mean, I picked two from the market which supports XA standard. So, nothing to rec nothing like a recommendation, but this is another use case where XA is very useful. So, let us see an example. In this case, uh, we have two MySQL instances. That is one is in India, one is in US. So, we distributed the user accounts uh, depends on their geography and uh, due to some reason, we want to move one user from one account to another one, I mean one instance to another one. So, we can have a asset compliant transaction to do that. So, what do we do? We tra uh, start the transaction with access start command whatever commands there you see which starts with XA is the transaction manager commands. If you have a transaction manager, you want to implement transaction manager as part of your application, these are the XA commands you will be using. If you have a uh, dedicated uh, transaction manager, then this will be taken care by the transaction manager. So, but as per the standard, this is how it goes. So, you define your transaction body with XA start and the XA end that is a transaction body and you execute whatever you want within that. So, any number of resource manager can join at that time and you can perform the operation. You can have a independent connection to each resource manager and execute the commands what you, what you want. Once that is done, you execute prepare. Here is important, you have to wait the success from all the resource manager prepare. If you get success from all the resource managers, go for commit on all the nodes that is it, you have a transaction complete, which ensures the asset properties. A short recap, what we have seen is uh, what is how is a distributed transaction and uh, how MySQL performs, uh, MySQL involves in exit transaction and how we can ensure asset properties across heterogeneous or uh, geographically distributed nodes. And some use cases with examples. So, those who are interested more about XA, there is another session by my colleague Nisha at uh, 3.30, you can attend that, we have more uh, details there. So, the second portion is about uh, document store, we will talk about it. So, when a new application or uh, uh, website uh, designs, we have these questions, right? What to choose from? Generally, we have these requirements like we need uh, rigid schema, we need join, we need asset properties, we need uh, foreign keys. There are so many requirements we consider. But the new new era of people who are developing this, they want different set. Of, they have different set of requirements. They need flexible schema, they need key value store, they want to store the JSON object they have naturally as part of the JavaScript framework they will be using and there is complete set of different requirements. So, always we get this question. So, what do you go with? A DBMS or a NoSQL uh, solution? So, what if we do not have to make that choice? 
from MySQL version 5.7.12, we have MySQL document store, which is available in the community edition of MySQL, <coughs> which supports uh, JSON data store and uh, the NoSQL kind of syntax for all CRDU operations. And it is available on all the famous uh, interfaces, API interfaces, and the new MySQL shell as well. And the JSON here supports all the basic data types, and there are some extended data types as well available. You can check the documentation for more details on the supported data types and uh, availability on that. But let's see how it looks like. So this is the syntax. This is how you create a document collection. I mean, the similar term for the NoSQL no world for uh, tables. So you, so DB. This is um, the new MySQL shell, and the DB is a object, a JavaScript object. I'm using the JS uh, by default. It uh, logs in as JS uh, interface. You can use JavaScript syntax here. So JS is a DB is a JavaScript object uh, associated with the uh, current uh, database. I mean the schema in the system, MySQL instance. So you create uh, use create collection to create a document collection. So here we are going to create a superheroes collection. Okay. So before going uh, to have some superheroes. Let's see what happened to our internal MySQL, right? This is the NoSQL uh, interface we have seen. So it was MD database, so when you, you can easily, I think you have noticed the first slash SQL, so it will switch to the SQL mode, suddenly in the shell itself. So you execute all the SQL commands here. So we see, we see a table with the same name. And the schema is, it has one real column and one generated column on the ID field. I'll talk about it later. Let's have two superheroes, one from uh, the SQL interface and one from the NoSQL interface. As you can see, the SQL interface syntax is super easy. As you can see, it's a familiar NoSQL syntax we use, and you can pass the whole uh, JSON object as it is to the uh, no SQL interface. At the same time, you can use uh, the familiar SQL interface to insert uh, documents there. One thing you might have noticed is the SQL interface there's an ID. That's a mandatory field if you are inserting using SQL interface. In case of no SQL, we generate it internally. This ID is being used as key value pair, key for the key value pair use case of no SQL. So, if you provide it in the NoSQL interface, we don't create it. We use that as a key for this particular JSON object. If not, one will be created because we have a index on that uh, field. So how do we retrieve data? So SQL, we know we can do a select, regular select. We will, it will return the normal JSON objects or we can go for JSON table to get it in a much more comfortable way. Or you could create a view with uh, the fields you are interested in. And you can use it with the regular uh, uh, joins or whatever way you want to use it. So this is kind of you want to make one part of the schema rigid for the regular SQL use case, while the other portion is JSON for the NoSQL interface, which is flexible. You can add any field. But this part of the schema will stay as it is. So this is way you can ensure that. So no SQL. It is very easy. Superheroes dot find will return all the columns. But it is not what we want. We need filters. It is available. There is a lot of filtering options available. One example I have shown here. There is limit and all other uh, set of filters available. You can see the uh, documentation for uh, set of available filters I have just showed, for example. So I'm skipping delete and update because it is similar. But another question which will come to mind is since it is being powered by a SQL database is integrity constraints, right? Can we enforce it? Let's try that. Sorry. So since we have superheroes, uh, which are from DC and Marvel, 
let us try to enforce that we need superheroes only from DC and Marvel. Okay, let's have a table with the publisher and uh, we created a generated column on the superheroes table. And yeah, I missed to tell you this, uh, the table superheroes, you can add any number of additional columns, okay? It still will be available in the NoSQL interface. You can have generated columns or you can have your own other columns which you want to use in the SQL interface. Still, the table will be available as a document collection in the NoSQL interface. So, we create a generator column and we add a foreign key with our newly created table. And let us uh, try to insert a non DC, no Marvel uh, superhero. His uh, so Superman, Saktiman, and uh, is an Indian superhero and it is from Dash Comics. Okay? Let us see what happens to this command. So, clearly, it shows an error saying that there is an integrity constraint failure. So, that is it, we have the integrity constraint available in NoSQL, at the same time we can use this capacity in the SQL interface as well. So, primarily that is it, the summary, we have a powerful NoSQL solution from MySQL which works great and the data is available via SQL and NoSQL at the same time and whatever the power and capacity available with MySQL, you can achieve or get that via NoSQL interface as well. Thank you. That is it. Questions, please. Yes. What is the relative performance of the uh, so, we have not done that benchmarking yet, but you are welcome to try it. Um, so, yeah. Any other question? No, then thank you so much. Okay, thank you.